In today's lesson, we're gonna take an in-depth look into the style of the one and only Mike Bloomfield. I'll show you some of his signature licks and then we'll get under the hood and take a look at his unique approach to note choice, technique, and some tone tips to get you closer to nailing his sound. My name is Jack Roosh, let's get into it. So Mike Bloomfield was a hugely influential guitar player in the 1960s and early 70s. He's famously known for his work with Bob Dylan and the Paul Butterfield Blues Band, but he played on lots of other great records as both a leader and a sideman. I've compiled a little playlist that I'll put down in the description. These are some of my favorite Bloomfield performances, some of which you may know already and some you might not. And if you're new to Bloomfield's playing, this is a good place to start. So for this lesson, I've composed a solo that's about a minute long and it's really just a compilation of different Bloomfield licks and ideas. Now as with all my lessons here on YouTube, all these examples will be tabbed out and available over on my Patreon site. But let's get into this solo. It's a 12 bar blues in the key of C and it's a rumba groove very reminiscent of the tune Marianne off the Live Adventures with Al Cooper record. I'll play the first 12 bars down and then we'll break down some of these licks. <laughs> So this solo starts with a really classic pickup line um, to get into the solo. And this is almost exactly what Mike plays on the tune Marianne off the record, uh, Live Adventures with Mike Bloomfield and Al Cooper, which is a great record to check out. Um, but he starts this out by playing this line. Right, and this is uh, a classic kind of blues pickup phrase where you're anticipating the downbeat of the first measure and playing into it. And one of the things you'll notice about Mike's playing is he really loves to highlight the major sixth interval. If we play up a C major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, the sixth note of that scale is the note A, right? That's your major sixth in the key of C. And he loves to target that note in his lines. He'll play, uh, there it is, an octave up, right? The same note. So he'll really use that to great effect in his lines. And that's something we'll discuss more as we work through all these different licks. Um, but he starts out by playing that little pickup. Right, and that's starting on the fifth. One, two, three, four, five. Then the sixth, and then the root. And then he slides this little double stop up, right, which is right out of this chord. It's the major third and the fifth right out of the C major chord. It's literally a part of that chord shape. And then it hit the root, and then it'll hit this double stop, and then hammer on from the minor third to the major third while leaving that B string note ringing. So. All right, I'll play it one more time really slow. Right, then from here he does a really nice little chromatic line. Right, and this is another signature of his playing. He's always tying together notes with little chromatic movement. Um, and this is just the root, then the minor third, major third, and then right up on the same string, fourth and flat five. And he uses that flat five a lot in his playing in a really cool way, so. And again, that ends with a little hammer on between the minor third and the major third. So that all together. Right? 
right? And that um, kind of takes us through the first four bars, and then we're gonna lead into what would be the four chord of our 12 bar blues. So we're heading to this F7 chord. And again, he kind of plays a rhythmic pickup into that. He does. Um, and this is another really classic kind of blues phrase. He's playing the minor third to the major third, and then really just outlining the top part of this bar chord. This is a C major triad with the major third, the fifth, and the root. And then from there, he's grabbing that note and then sliding into the same note an octave, or, or on another string, right? Exact same pitch, uh, but on the B string. And this just shifts you into a different position. And then he does another one of his signatures, which is hitting a note and sliding up the fretboard. He grabs that minor third and just lets it slide up. Um, and this is something that, this is an embellishment that he uses all the time in his playing when you listen to um, these different recordings. It's really a great little signature thing of his style. And if you want to kind of channel that sound, um, it's a great thing to add to your playing. So. Then from here, we're in this position and he plays, uh, right? Which is another um, kind of signature thing that he does uh, in this position. He'll play a lot right in this pentatonic position right here. And this is really just um, a part of this larger pentatonic box. Right, so if you know your pentatonic scale patterns, right, um, all this stuff kind of lays neatly within these boxes, right? So, right, it's all right there. So, so that takes us uh, through the four chord and then back to the one chord. And then over the five chord, as we move up here to the G7, he does one of the things he's really known for that's a, a real signature of his style, which is playing between the major third and the fourth. And he does. Right, and this is something that you can really use uh, anytime you're playing over a five chord. It's something that he uses in a lot of different ways, and a lot of blues players use um, in different ways. But you know, you can move it uh, down the octave. You can play. Right, or you can play. Right? It's such a useful thing um, if you're thinking, well, what do I play over a five chord in the blues? Just, uh, right, tying that in with other phrases. Um, really, all of these little phrases are like puzzle pieces that you can connect together in different combinations and different ways to come up with your own solos. And that's basically how I kind of composed and constructed this solo, was just take little pieces of Mike Bloomfield's playing and kind of tie them together in different ways. Um, so that's over the five chord, this. Then as we go back to the one chord, so the turnaround section, he plays this great line. Right, and this is a lick um, I got literally f straight out of the tune um, Gypsy Good Time off the record he did with uh, Nick Gravanites, uh My Labors, which is a fantastic record to check out. Um, and that tune is in the playlist, which uh, is down in the description. But this lick, again, uses that major six. He plays the flat seven to the root, and then the major six and then the minor third. So, right, that's how it starts out. And that right there alone is a great little um, device to use. Right, you can repeat that or make that a part of another lick. But he goes from there, 
and then up to the fourth, right? And then our little triad again with the hammer on. And then this little hammer on to the major sixth and then just those two notes and then this sort of double bend uh, to bring you into the next 12 bars. So. Play it one more time, slowed down, so. Right, so the whole thing tied together is, um, Alright, so let's continue on with the next 12 bars of this solo. This section is going to continue to expand on some of these same concepts and ideas and stretch things out even further across the fretboard. So this next section of the solo takes off right where we left off with this double bend. And then he plays um, this little hammer on trill thing. Right, this is another signature thing that he plays all the time. Right, that's a little hammer on pull off from the root up to the ninth. and then sliding up to this root here on the B string. And then he does, right, which is a really, uh, another classic way of kind of using that chromatic idea. Minor third, major third, fourth. Right, again, using some of those pentatonic ideas we talked about before, but tying in some little chromatic connection notes there. So, uh... Right, and then he does another really great line, um, similar to what we did before, where he plays... Again, kind of playing in this pentatonic box. Right, the top part of this pentatonic box pattern based around this chord, but using that major sixth and tying in the major third. So, so again, he's playing flat seven, root six, minor third, then coming down to the root and then doing this little chromatic walk up, minor third, fourth, fifth, and then, uh, five major six root, right? Again, just really leaning on that major six note, that note A, and using little chromatic things to tie it all together, so. Right, and he lands on that note right as we change to the four chord, right? This F chord, because that note A is right within that F chord, so it really helps outline the sound of the chord. And that's another thing um, that Mike Bloomfield was really good about. When you listen to him play, especially playing the blues, he never misses the chord changes. He's always playing into the chord change, anticipating the chord change, and outlining it in some way. He's really good about that, um, which is not something you hear all the time with a lot of blues players. Um, but you know, really great players, guys like B.B. King, Mike Bloomfield, certain players like that are really good about um, targeting chord tones and outlining keynotes over the chord changes. 
So that's the line he plays going into the four chord section. Um, and then uh, from here, he plays sliding up here. And this is a line that, again, I got straight out of the tune, Marianne. Um, he, the reason we kind of slide up here instead of playing is because the next thing we're gonna play really extends up the fretboard and really stretches out across the fretboard. And this is a really cool thing that um, there's lots of examples of Mike doing this um, on different recordings, but there's a really clear cut way right on this tune, Marianne. So then he goes up here to the flat seven way up here on the high E string and then down flat seven, six, there's our major six again, right? So that's B flat, A to G. And then that's the fourth to the major third, right? Uh, F to E, so. And then he comes down here to this minor pentatonic box. Right, so. Right, a really cool slick way of extending across the fretboards. Right, I'll play it one more time, slow down. Right, so that's a really cool little thing and that's gonna bring us into the five chord. And there he plays, right, going back to the six chord, which over the five chord, again, this is gonna be the ninth of this five chord, which is a really colorful note that's right out of this chord shape right here. Um, so, Another um, kind of major pentatonic idea. He'll do that a lot where he'll play the fifth here on the B string and then bend up from the ninth up to the major third. And then leading into the next 12 bars, we're gonna do this um, chromatic movement again. which is another signature of his style. Okay, so there's one more 12 bar section to this solo, and this time around, we're gonna build intensity by digging in a little bit more, just the way Mike would. And we're gonna continue to use the entire fretboard at our disposal to really nail all these different chord changes. <laughs> To start out this last 12 bars, we're gonna slide way up the fretboard again. This section is gonna really extend across the whole fretboard. But to start this out, we're gonna come up here to our major sixth again, this note A up on the high E string. And we're gonna play the six, the five, the minor third, right? This has kind of been a common theme of his throughout this solo. Right, we've played a lot of these things between the major sixth and the minor third. So this is no different. We're gonna slide up and play six, five, minor third to the root. And then from here, we're gonna just stick up in this upper spot and play this kind of repeating little minor pentatonic lick. And for this, you know, you can dig in a little bit harder. Um, Mike, oftentimes we kind of move the pick 
down by the bridge or closer to the neck to affect the tone. If you play things up here, it has a sweeter sound. As you move down here, it gets a brighter, more brash tone. Right, and then um, from here, we're gonna play uh, this kind of classic lick, bending up to the root and then grabbing the root there on the high E string and then six minor third root. And from here, we're gonna do another signature little chromatic move of Mike's, which is Right, this is something he uses a lot. It's very reminiscent of B.B. King, and that is the five chromatic up to the six, right? And then, again, root nine minor third. So six minor third, that combination of notes again. All right, one more time. Again, we're just gonna repeat that little uh, motif. Root, major six, minor third, root. Right, and then here as we move to the five chord, this is a cool lick um, that I've heard him do in various ways, but he's gonna actually move down here like you're playing over this G shape down here in this pentatonic box. Right, over the G chord, and he plays Which is such a cool line because it's utilizing the flat five there. So that's right. And that's a lick you could move around. You could play that up here over the C chord if you wanted. But uh, he uses it here. And then to the four chord, there's our uh, move again with the fifth. Right, and then that bend. And then we're gonna do our little chromatic movement again. So one of the things you'll notice um, when you're listening to Mike's playing is how he builds intensity um, throughout his solos with his pick attack and um, you know his sound is so dynamic um, a lot of times when he's playing you know he may not have the volume controls on the guitar all the way up um, and he, so he has headroom there in his volume control where he can turn up louder he also runs his amps extremely loud he's usually using uh, twin reverb or super reverb or a combination of those amps um, set very loud with a lot of treble. Um, so he's got plenty of headroom and he's got plenty of brightness on tap that he can then control with the volume and tone controls on the guitar. He also usually plays um, in the middle position on a Les Paul um, and then will manipulate the two volumes. But you can hear at times where he'll switch over to strictly the bridge pickup for a more aggressive tone. And then just the way he picks, he's very dynamic. Um, with his attack. So those are all things um, to consider when you're trying to nail the Bloomfield sound. Um, for the solo examples, I uh, borrowed uh, my friend's Mike Bloomfield Tribute Les Paul, which is a fantastic guitar um, that really nails that sound. And I'm running into this Princeton reverb head here, which is, you know, similar in tone to uh, something like a 60s Fender Super Reverb or Prince, uh, Twin Reverb. And I'm running the volume really loud. It's at about eight. I've got the treble at about six. The bass is at about two and the reverb is up to three. So plenty of reverb, plenty of treble and lots of volume. And then just controlling things here 
with the volume controls, the pickup selector, and where you're picking the notes. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I know there's not a lot of lesson content out there really diving into the style of Mike Bloomfield. So hopefully this lesson helped illuminate some of the mysteries of his playing. Um, I'm gonna be doing a follow-up to this lesson diving into his approach to slow blues. So keep an eye out for that in a couple weeks. And uh, head over to the Patreon site for additional lesson content. And until next time, happy practicing and take care. Thank you.